this has actually been a great session at the end because this, this literally four of my closest friends are all up talking about things and we were also four friends that sat together before you started giving us money and before Catapult was formed and tried to figure out how the hell we we're going to get here. And it's fantastic to see everybody succeeding and a big fund that's coming up could be very interesting for you all. But So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Ashford. So I'm going to be really quick because I did a talk last night and this morning and I can't be bothered too many more. So I'm going to be real quick. This is the Musselburgh Cluster. Um, this is our new headquarters in an old church. I was only able to do that because my best friend is a stonemason and managed to fix it. It's falling apart. Um, but to give you some of the story, we're an Earth Observation Company, or kind of managed space solutions company, just now. We're evolving. Um, I don't know. <coughs> there's no point going into too much of the com competition side. We're probably one of the fastest growing SMEs in the space sector. Um, very collaborative. A lot of my friends are in this room, and we've all worked together. Um, we also have a product that requires collaboration, because we can't, as much as we've tried to, do everything. But um, I started up the business, I'll be preaching to the converted now, but I started up the business um, largely because I'm unemployable. Um, and, and because I came to the realization that, that space would need startups. You know, that the kind of government money was starting to get beat down or just after the recession. This great thing that we do was in serious danger. And I thought, well, we're going to have to have that kind of startup mentality. I need to m get more crazies in the space industry. And that's largely because they're the ones that come up with the innovations. I was quite surprised when I got into space. Well, I've always been in it, but I was quite surprised when I got involved in astronautics as to how uninnovative it actually was. And there's, there's, there's always a... We had to task uh, Tandem a couple of months back, and we couldn't do it without sending them a fax. So high-tech space done through a fax. But um, there's more into that. So I thought, well, if, we could, if I could apply some of this stuff that I'd learned after uni and, and, and you know, being a startup guy to space and then look for innovations, we might be onto something. And in that sense, it's a key realization to understand that the space sector, okay, it's, it's starting to open itself to innovations, but the true innovation with space is not to look at the space sector whatsoever. So I love my space upstream and I, I love being involved in this industry. I, I care for it deeply, but I turned my back completely to it when we launched the company. So we launched the company with this, this simple idea. It's become this little party trick that I'm not doing today. Because I've given you all too many opportunities to come up with stuff that will trip me up. But um, we go out away from the space sector. We largely do it into the government right now. But we go to people and say, what are your problems? It's a great thing for an engineer to be able to ask that. And they tell us what those problems are. And we try and find a space solution to that. And when I started, I thought that it was maybe going to be about 20% of the solution. Maybe I'd just stick a wee GPS in something. And we've built a business that's now 24 strong, up from two in only three years, based by solving about 70% of that, that problem. And we've always exported. So we bootstrapped as well, and we did it by exporting. I remember the, the Glasgow Space Conference, about four people just turning around and going, who the hell are you? <laughs> we just came out of the middle of nowhere. We'd uh, bought some um, thermal data on a credit card of the Japanese and sold it to the Latvian government. And that was the first bit of business we did. It took about six months to, to turn that around. And that was a nice way to kind of get going in the industry, to actually deal with the, the painful puberty of selling something, something that all companies have to go through. And we did it, and we've always continued to export. So we've developed lots and lots of innovative layers uh, throughout our time, largely focused on solving problems in, in, in infrastructure projects. So everything from oil and gas all the way to fisheries, aquaculture, um, stability. We're radar nuts because we've got cloudy skies all the time. And one of the biggest things that happened that, that let us grow um, came from the, the, the first IPSP round where RAPID uh, was selected and raised here somewhere. But that's, I keep thanking them every time I see them just in case they get more money. Um, but RAPID is basically a way of taking all the layers that we've came up with and wrapping them in a big ribbon and giving them out to governments to create better resilience and faster recovery in natural disasters. We call it the long tail of disaster recovery, where we deal with training them, preparing them to be more resilient, and then allowing them to recover quicker when things like the disaster charter switches off. And it's been a fantastic 
fund for us to do two things. Get out with proper money behind us across the globe and start penetrating country-wide markets. So we're in Cambodia, Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, soon to be Sri Lanka, and we've just started to get into South America. So we're going to the governments and we're saying to them, what are your economic pain points? What is it about the world that keeps kicking you in the ass and costing you a lot of money? And they'll tell us that in Vietnam, it's uh, protection of their farmed fisheries. In Malaysia, it's their forestry. In, um, in Nepal, it's land stability. So we look at all the problems and then we go out and we solve them with our own layers and often, more importantly, with other people's layers. So there's a few of my friends in this room that, that will be supplying into rapid agriculture, land motion, forestry, fracking, all that biomass stuff. We can't do that. So we go to our friends and they become a part of this marketplace we're opening up. Um, so that's something if you want to talk about, if you've got your own downstream layers, certainly come to me and talk to me. Touch me about that later on. We have a unique uh, pricing model. We sell our, our services on a subscription based on evaluating the economic savings to our government. And then we try and charge about 10% of that. So it's an easy gig for the ministers to get that off their taxpayers because every dollar they give us saves them nine thereabouts. And it also means that as space data has become cheaper and cheaper and more commoditized, there's more subscription. And that's better for spreading around too greedy though. So I think the future for us is um, I've been saying quite a lot of the time and um, getting in trouble sometimes that, that the downstream is hugely important. It is the big growth part of space for our industry. It's how we're going to get to the 40 billion or thereabouts. But the upstream still gets an awful lot of the interest. And in some ways that's a good thing. But I don't feel that if we're going to build the downstream in the UK, we can truly feel secure about that because we don't really own that many satellites. The UK doesn't own many Earth observation satellites. So I've been out there kind of shouting about this quite a lot. And somebody heard it, someone in NASA heard it, and they've commissioned a company called Teledyne Brown to build this thing called the Muses platform. And they then came to AstroSat and said, could you be our payload services and payload integration partner? So the Musselburgh cluster, expanding largely through Scotland, is going to be run that up on the space station soon. And the thing I love about that, there's lots of things I love about that. It can appeal to almost everybody in this room. It's going to be the Astronomy Technology Centre, University of Strathclyde and Astrosat that take this forward. And, you know, I've spoken to Stuart about this. There is the possibility. This is all about hot swappable, quick missions. So these, that, the DLR one's already up there. We're just selling that data. These three ones and another, potentially two other Muses platforms, they're taken up maybe every three months and the Canada arm goes and grabs them plonks them in there and then can pull them back out. So you've got a real opportunity to do quick mission planning. Some of them, if they're really good, will hang on to them and we'll make it a commercial platform. It'll be diurnal, it's, it's very purple. It can slew, so we can do stereography, we can do tracking, it's great for forestry. But one of the coolest things is that when we're all looking at investments, let's say that, that someone goes to Mark and says, I want to invest for a, a brand new constellation that's pocket cubes or, or CubeSats for imaging it's a specific band for fisheries or, or forestry. The challenge that Mark's going to have and that the investors are going to have is that there's a massive risk in doing that because currently you have to just get together a CubeSat or a small sat, launch it, deal with all the pain of a spacecraft bus. But the TRL actually is probably okay with the spacecraft bus. It's probably the TRL of the imager that's dragging everything down. So with this product, you could take your imager, you could send it to us, we could get it up in the space station and we could raise the TRL of the imager and thereby raise the TRL and reduce the risk of the entire future constellation. So it's a fantastic opportunity for us to really get technology up to TRL 9 or subsystems up to TRL 9, all from Scotland. And it could be that we get a demand to do something from a government saying we need to test something specifically out. We define the right thing. The ATC in Edinburgh build it. It's shipped back to us. Maybe we'll integrate it with some Clyde subsystem or pocket cube subsystem. And then it could be sent to Presswick, stuck on one of your launchers, and it could be up at the space station. So we could literally have east to west Scottish collaboration. 
which really hurts me. And I know that you also put the Edinburgh companies on at the end of the day. That was quite clever. Thank you, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, this is the future for us. Rapid is still the present and a big part of our future. Thank you very much. Congratulations to everybody I've been seeing growing. Thank you.